Well, good morning, and uh, thanks for being here. Uh, before I begin, I want to recognize the anniversary of the D-Day invasion in Normandy. Um, as some of you know, my dad was severely injured uh, shortly after uh, the D-Day invasion in St. Lo. And uh, seeing some of the events uh, on TV and reading some of the, uh, the events that are happening uh, this week uh, brings that all back. And I, and I really do wonder uh, what some were thinking that day. And, uh, and the 10,000 uh, aircraft that were in the air and the tens of thousands of, uh, of boats in the water and all the men we lost uh, that day, over 2,000, is significant. So I want to uh, thank uh, not only the greatest generation uh, for who served in World War II, uh, but also those who serve every day to protect our freedoms. And um, it's, uh, it's heartwarming to see all of our leaders come together on this occasion uh, this week. So with that, uh, the day I became governor, the day after I became governor, I was faced with the daunting task of building my team to oversee state government. Uh, it, was, uh, it was literally uh, having to hire the entire administration, put my team together. And as I've thought about that, uh, you, you know, I've, I've expressed how I did that. I used the four C's. The first is making sure they had character and integrity. The first C, which is important, uh, competence in the area that I'm asking them to serve, uh, as well as the, the commitment to the tough road ahead. It's not a nine to five job. It's fairly, very uh, in depth uh, and 24-7, uh, and as well as having the chemistry uh, to work with the team, to put yourself uh, in the in the uh, in the uh, realm of the team, and um, and uh, not uh, not putting yourself ahead of that. So uh, it was uh, it was daunting. It took us a while, and it was a tight, compressed time frame. And I, I'm very uh, blessed with having a, a great team uh, who surrounds me, and uh, and is committed and and has all the integrity in the world. And so I. Um, I'm pleased uh, to have uh, a couple here today, but Secretary Gabay is here with me uh, today, and it's bittersweet in many respects, because today we're announcing that after nearly a decade of public service, Al is returning to private life and will be stepping down as Human Services Secretary. So over the last two and a half years, Al has been a great asset uh, leading our largest agency a valued member of my cabinet and someone I've relied on uh, for advice, good advice, over the last two and a half years. As many of you know, Hal has a wide range of skills and experiences that will be tough to replace. He may tell you something differently and uh, that he's just someone who sells creamies, uh, but don't let him fool you uh, because you couldn't do that, what he's been able to do in state government without being talented serving as the Secretary of Human Services forces uh, uh, you to become very knowledgeable in a lot of different areas. But I think Al's legacy will be in the improved management systems of the agency, as well as his leadership on health care reform. As some of you may recall, when I took office, we had just gone through several years of health care turmoil. The health care exchange uh, was failing. And frankly, uh, it felt like a lot of Vermonters had lost faith in state government's ability to get things done. However, the reality was and remains that we needed to make the exchange work because health care costs were and are growing too fast. And not having a plan to address both was unacceptable to me. So we had to land on a strategy that would make the exchange work while also working to improve the quality and get a handle on the costs. As the previous administration and legislatures learned the hard way, this is all easily uh, said, but not as, uh, as easily done. Given this backdrop, I, along with many, were skeptical of big new initiatives that overpromise and underdeliver. So whatever we landed on, I knew we were going to have to, to prove that it worked every step of the way. This approach uh, doesn't offer the easy political talking points others have used, but keeping this work out of the political fray 
may be why we've been able to make such progress, proving we can implement payment reforms across the healthcare system. Al and his team at AHS and the Department of Health Access in particular, DIVA, implemented the first pilot phase of our all-payer model with Medicaid patients. Knowing any missteps around what it costs or managing claims could cause Vermonters to lose confidence in state government again. Today, and I'm sure many healthcare providers would attest to, Medicaid is the most reliable pair within the model, which is a testament to Al's leadership and ability to put ideas into practice. It's also been a big reason the model continues to gain momentum two and a half years later, because someone proved it could work. In fact, Al and I even traveled to Washington to meet with the Centers for Medicare and Medicaid uh, Services, uh, CMS, and learned uh, our payment reform innovations and our accountable care organization was the only model demonstrating savings across the country. The other major challenges, uh, challenge I asked Al to tackle was to balance the goals of making, the Vermont, of making Vermont more affordable and protect the most vulnerable. In any, uh, in any year, balancing the AHS budget is difficult. But for the first two years, Al had to do this without the option of raising a tax or fee. When you consider the factors outside of AHS, such as increasing payments on our debt obligation, salary and benefit increases, and slow natural revenue growth to meet these obligations, you know Al and the talented team at AHS had to do a lot of hard work to get us across the finish line, especially in those first two budget cycles. This was only possible through good management, and good management is a result of effective leadership. Here's an interesting fact to put this in perspective. Through operational improvements, good case management, and a strong economy, last fiscal year we saw AHS spend $70 million less across all funds than in the final year of the previous administration. In addition to these specific achievements, the agency continues to be on the front line of my administration's goal to protect the most vulnerable, tackling some of the state's most heartbreaking and complex challenges, including the opioid epidemic and mental health. These are areas where there's always a need to do more, but working closely with the legislature and other state agencies, we're strengthening our response to these and other issues with a number of new initiatives. This includes testing for lead in our schools and childcare centers, mm -hmm. three bills that aim to decrease the use of tobacco and vape products by our kids, and increase investments in family services, mental health facilities, and weatherization. There is clearly a lot of, uh, to be proud of over the last few years, and I can't think of a better person to have led this mission than Al. We're fortunate that together we built a strong team at HS, though he will be sorely missed by them, and by my, me personally, by the way, as a loyal friend and confidant. Al, I wish you the very best as you go back to your businesses and step away from public service, at least for right now. I don't think we've seen the last of you. Uh, thank you for your commitment to Vermont and Vermonters, to the agency, the cabinet, and to me, and I'm very proud to have had you a member of my team. With that, anything you want to say? I don't even know what to say after that. I mean, my, the first thing I think is that D-Day is a tough day to talk about yourself or have someone talk about you. So. As a former officer in the United States Army, that's something that sits with me. Um, I'll be brief that um, it's not often you get to work uh, with a friend who's the governor. Um, I spent a lot of time uh, trying to help Phil get elected as lieutenant governor. And when he was lieutenant governor, as someone who was on the Green Mountain Care Board and became chair, he was just a tremendous friend and confidant while I tried to actually do that job. Um, and then uh, 
I'm not sure why you decided to run for governor, but you did, and so uh, congratulations, you are governor. Um, we've been able to work uh, together for all these years, and uh, it's just been an incredible joy to watch you serve and to be a part of your team. Um, I think a lot of people will say, you know, or ask me, you know, why. Um, I think in these jobs, we all have an internal clock that we know about. Um, no one else can see it. And, you know, you know when uh, it's time for you. It's a personal thing. And I feel this is the right time for me. Um, you know, I will say that the team at AHS is just <laughs> unbelievably talented. I am so grateful to them. Uh, Deputy Secretary Martha Maxim's here today. Um, it's just been a, a privilege and an honor to work with people. Um, you know, what I've said to them is they've actually made me a better human being um, by teaching me about some of my own weaknesses. Um, also, to all the folks in the room, uh, folks of the cabinet, um, you know, it, it, these are tough jobs, but you are amazing people. You work so hard. Um, you deserve, a lot of you, no one knows all the hard work you do. You deserve uh, an incredible amount of credit. Um, last person I'll mention is Candace Morgan, who's the future of all state government. <laughs> Everyone should try to watch what she does with her life because there's uh, just no one that I have more respect for that I've met along the way uh, at AHS. Um, and that's other than uh, I can't believe uh, all the nice things you said about me, boss. I want to <laughs> thank you. So, With that, I'd be happy to answer or try to answer any questions you might have. So was there anything in particular that made this the right time? So timing is, you know, is interesting. I'd say that there's no good time to leave ever. Um, but when we talked about it, when I thought about it, it's not good to leave during an election year. It's not good to leave during a legislative session. It's not good to leave once you put your budget together. It sort of leaves like June and July. And so <laughs> this is June. Um, and so, you know, that's sort of the logic. I'm not saying my logic is right, but that was sort of my thinking. Um, the governor thinks she'll be back in public service. Never against him. <laughs> um, I, you know, I, I think that I've really enjoyed my time in public service. Um, you know, I think I'm going to go and, you know, he, he joked, but make creamies and wash dishes and, you know, we'll figure it out. So it was a desire to return to your businesses that led to this? Well, it would be my wife's desire that I return to the businesses <laughs> that led to this. But uh, I mean, I think, you know, a lot of people in this room work in state government, but, you know, eight years in, in these jobs, is a, it's almost eight. It's, it's, a, it's a lot of work and, and uh, you just know when it's time. I think you know when it's time. And so that's, that's how I made the decision. What do you think is your number one accomplishment as secretary? The team I put together. I mean, the people that that have that have come to work at AHS and the jobs they've they've taken on. And I don't mean commissioners. I mean, I, I think you got to look below deputy commissioner even and and into some of the other places. There's just people, um, you know, there's people doing amazing work um, that don't ever get mentioned. You know, you don't ever hear from them. But if they don't do their jobs right, there's a there's a report. <laughs> there's a there's something in the media. And they're just they're just talented people, and I'm just really proud of them. I think that's something that uh, both uh, Al and I have recognized. Maybe coming from the private sector and into state government, uh, the more I get into state government, the more I visit uh, the different agencies and departments, uh, the, the more I find such talented people uh, that could be doing other things uh, in life, but they've chosen uh, to work uh, in public service in many respects, and they. And they could be doing better, um, financially better, in maybe other states and other areas. But they, they choose to help us, and uh, and I appreciate that talent and the expertise that they bring to the table. And I think that Al has recognized that uh, throughout EHS. Advice for your successor: Don't try to manage the place. It's really big. Try to lead it, and uh, and and trust your people. They're good people. Uh, what is the where is the process at in terms of finding a successor? Well, um, I don't know if uh, Deputy Secretary Maxim knows this, but uh, <laughs> she will be yes. uh, interim uh, while we look and search uh, for a replacement, if that's a good term to use for Al. And uh, so we'll we'll take that uh, 
we'll take that one step at a time. But we're in good hands right now. Martha mm -hmm. is the, does a does a tremendous job as as Al well Better tested. hands. Better hands. <laughs> Uh, when when did you make this decision? Uh, so, uh, full transparency. I've tried to be really transparent here. Uh, when I went to meet with the governor after he got elected, I was actually going to tell him, "Hey, I think I should probably head home." I, you know, um, and he said, "Hey, I before you open up that file and tell me about the Greenmont Care Board, there's a few things I want to talk to you about." So that's when I that was the first time I thought about it, and then. Governor and I, over the last few weeks, have had conversations, and you know that's sort of the way it kind of blossomed. But Al is right; there really isn't any good time, um, and uh, right. you know, I respect uh, his decision, and uh, I know that uh, this is tough work. So I, I appreciate all everything he's done, and uh, and the way he's handled himself, and the way we handle this as well. Questions? <laughs> well, I've got one for you. <laughs> uh, all due respect to the secretary. Uh, you now have H57 and S169. Have you looked through them, read them over, been briefed on them, and has it shaped your thinking on those bills? Yeah, I have. Uh, I've started uh, doing some some research on the and reading uh, H169. Uh, I think it's H or S. S169. Uh, at this point, um, and uh, we received H57 yesterday. So, uh, no, I have not made any decisions at this point, uh, and I'm still going to go through them and receive as much feedback as I possibly can over the next few days and come to a decision um, by Monday or Tuesday. What is the deadline for each of those? Uh, Monday and Tuesday. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> uh, <laughs> 169 is Monday and then right. issues just on next So you, you're reading through 169. Anything stand out to you as problematic yet? Uh, no, I, I'm really trying to get uh, as much data as I can uh, that's available. And some of it uh, I read uh, through VPR, as a matter of fact. Uh, but uh, as, as well, there was a story in VPR uh, that I read through. <coughs> and as I, I'm reaching out to the, uh, or I've reached out to the commissioner uh, of, uh, of uh, health uh, to try and find out uh, if there's any other information that's pertinent to this. Uh, what about the medical monitoring bills? I uh, have not received that yet. I, I believe it may be, may be ready or be close to being ready, but I have not received that at this point. Anything on your desk you're planning to veto? There's, um, there at this point in time, I think we have. I'm trying to determine how many bills we have uh, actually there. Upwards of ten, several bills. Yeah. Um, so this this always uh, the ability. I mean, you know, I have three choices: uh, sign, uh, let go into law without my signature, and veto. Um, I would say that there are fewer bills uh, being considered for vetoes as the previous two years, uh, so that's good news. Um, but uh, but there are some uh, areas that I have concerns. And which of those bills? Well, I would say uh, you, you brought up uh, medical monitoring. Uh, I want to figure out, uh, read through that when we receive it, uh, how much has changed since I vetoed that last year. Uh, plastics ban. Yeah, same same answer uh, that uh, that I think I've uh, we've talked about in uh, press conferences before. Um, it seems as though uh, the the retailers have no problem with this uh, this bill and uh, has some support. Uh, we'll go through it to make sure that it uh, it it uh, technically works. And uh, but I have no reason to believe that uh, there'll be any veto on the table for that one. Uh, the budget? The budget, again, <clears throat> isn't exactly uh, as, uh, as I would have hoped, but uh, it never is. Um, and I think it's uh, within the realm of, uh, of being a, a good bill uh, for us in a lot of different respects. It includes a, a lot of uh, initiatives that I had forwarded. So uh, again, we'll, when we receive that, we haven't received that one either. 
Uh, but when we receive that, we'll go through it to make sure it's technically correct. Uh, but uh, I see no reason um, for a veto there either. Well, I'll keep your street code. I'm sorry? Keep your street code. Yes. <laughs> well, it would be nice to be able to sign one sometime. <laughs> you've um, you got some folks looking at replacing you in 2020. Um, have you made a determination on what your plan is for 2020? And what do you think of T.J. Dunnigan? Jesus. I, you know, I, I'm looking. It's five months ago, I think almost to the day that I was sworn in. Um, wow. Never too early. <laughs> sometimes it's too late. Yeah, maybe, sometimes, and maybe that's why we should have a four-year cycle. But I don't know what you'd have to do. You do in that, uh, that amount of time in between. Um, <clears throat> uh, well, we'd ask about 2022. <laughs> <laughs> Obviously, uh, you know, I'm focusing on the work at hand. Um, we're just getting off uh, this legislative session. Uh, looking that we're just in half time. Uh, we'll be moving on. We'll be building our budgets. Uh, working to get around the state uh, to make sure that we're we're forwarding uh, the the goals of my administration to grow the economy, uh, make Vermont more affordable, protect the most vulnerable, and uh, we'll continue to do so. So my focus is on that, uh, and uh, and I I uh, under no misconception that there will be uh, many who uh, would like to oppose me if I choose to run in the next election. Should Republicans be nervous that they're going to have to scramble for a candidate? Um, well, they may be doing so as we speak. I, you know, I don't know. <laughs> but you can't assure them that you're in it. Um, you know, again, uh, I don't think uh, uh, it's appropriate at this point in time uh, for me to announce my intentions. Uh, we have a job to do, and we're going to do it. You planning on racing this year? I've already raced once uh, last week, the week before. And uh, I hope to I hope to race a few more times this year. <coughs> Any concerns about the uh, the story that Digger published a few days ago about the uh, public service public safety department and um, its internal communications? It seemed to be more aimed at slamming Digger than at actually like finding out the truth and informing people. Um, obviously, I uh, always have a concern about uh, communications and transparency and so forth. Um, I've, uh, I've asked uh, our public safety, uh, I would like to know exactly what happened, uh, if we can get that information uh, together. Uh, there's some HIPAA concerns as well uh, with, uh, uh, with the trooper who was affected. Um, so I'm hoping to get to the bottom of that. I'd also uh, like to, to be able to to say with some certainty uh, the dangers of, of contact with fentanyl um, and, and provide uh, for that, uh, that information. So uh, I've asked them uh, to, to uh, put some uh, information together for me to review. Um, I, it appears, again, from, from my perspective, and, and I don't have anything to base this on, but uh, it appears they may have gotten ahead of themselves uh, in terms of coming to a conclusion. Uh, that may not have been real, but uh, could have been real. So um, we'll uh, we'll move beyond this, uh, learn from this experience, and uh, and hopefully not replicate it. I may have missed this, but Secretary Gobey, when is your last day? <laughs> <laughs> it's not today, right? <laughs> <laughs> so we're, we're, basically, we're basically saying June. I, there's some stuff we're working on that we want to get. Accomplished and sometimes later this month. That's right. Nineteen? Twenty nineteen, Governor. Yeah, we nineteen or twenty. Might have been eighteen. You know? <laughs> Do you plan on taking any action on the gun bill? Um, I'm I'm still working my way through that. Uh, I'll have until until Monday uh, to decide what to do, uh, whether to sign uh, or. Uh, let go without signature or a veto. Uh, one of the three, but uh, uh, all three are on the table at this point. That's it. Easy. Yeah. Easy week for you. Yeah, thank you very much. We ought to do this more often. Walk with fewer reporters. I didn't say that. <laughs> Appreciate you coming in. Thank, thank you. you.